Hello everyone. Welcome to another tutorial of MongoDB basic series. My name is Jairaj and thanks for joining again. So in previous tutorial we have started discussion of uh, CRUD operations and we have seen three methods to create or insert documents in database. And also we have seen how to use various Mongo shell functions. So moving ahead in this uh, discussion we will discuss how to query documents or how to read documents from the database. So let's get started. So reading or querying documents is one of the most important and most used functionalities in any application or system. So for example take our social networks where people put photos and videos one time and after uploading content sometimes they edit it and uh, rarely delete it but reading operation happens many times sometimes in millions because after uploading content other users visit it share it and uh, sometimes they visit multiple times so point i'm making is reading operation need to be very efficient in terms of time how long it is taking to retrieve and uh, how big is the data because bigger the data it will take more time in the transport so let me start my mongo server and here i'm using my local mongodb so i'm going to use this brew command brew services start command to start it and uh, after starting it i'm going to use mongo command to connect it with my mongo shell so I'm connected with my Mongo server and the first thing we need to do is we need to go to our test database. So use test. So I'm in our test database and here if I do show collections, we have books and employee collection. Let me do control K to clean the Mongo shell so you guys can see. And here if I do something like db.books.find and if I hit tab key twice then I can see six functions here which is starting with this find word. So we have these two function which is, which is find and find one which is for read operations and other four is for update or delete operations so we're not going to cover them in this particular tutorial. So here if I do find one and if I call this function without this parenthesis then I can see that it is function internally using this find function. So if you understand find function properly then you don't need to worry about this find one function right. So we're going to focus more on our find functions. So let me check the signature of find function and how it works. So let me do control K to clean this Mongo shell. And here if I do same find without parentheses and if I hit enter. So as you can see here this function is taking many things as an argument. It is taking query, field, limit, skip, batch size and option. So one thing to note here is that none of this field is mandatory. So if I pass empty find function then still it will work. But it will give me everything which is inside our collection. So let me do control K. So now let me hit this find function with parenthesis this time. And if I hit enter, I can see so much data which is not readable at all. So let me do control K to clean the Mongo shell. And again, I'm going to call this find function. But this time I will add this pretty function at the last. So this pretty function will rearrange our JSON code so we can read it properly. And this time if I hit enter, I can see this is rearranged JSON re responses. So as you can see here this find function without any argument is giving me everything and as I mentioned if you get everything from the collection this is not an efficient operations. So to understand this situation properly I have one example I have developed one small library management system in my local and here we are using that book collection in our database and this is the UI for that. And so here for UI I am using react and for backend I am using Spring Boot application and both are running in my local. So on this page if I do inspect and if I go inside this network tab and if I re let me clean this and if I refresh this I can see this books API and this API is giving me 400 documents at a time and each document have so much data inside it. So if I open one of this I can see we have authors categories and so many other fields. But if I go to my UI then you can see we are using only four fields. We are using ID, we are using title, page count and authors. We are not using any other fields right. So what is happening here is I am filtering information in code which is an extra load on the program and this program could be anything. I can filter the same data in JavaScript or I can write a code in a Java or Python for backend and I can filter this data. In our case I am filtering this information in our React layer. So same way if I need to short this document I can short this via any field and I can put code in any layer. I can put code in JavaScript or I can put code in our backend. But filtration and uh, doing any processing on data in code which is not a good idea especially for this kind of operations because we know that every operation takes time and CPU resources and additionally network bandwidth is also one factor in uh, overall system performance. 
So ideal way to deal with this is write a proper query so that Mongo can give us information that we need. We don't need to do this filtration process. Okay, and that way we can transfer some of the load of the application to the another layer. So our application run a little bit faster. So let's say we need a default shorting order by title. And in that case, we can put a shorting mechanism in any layer. We can write code in JavaScript or we can write code in our backend layer. But if you think logically, right now we have only 400 documents. But in real world, it could be millions of documents, right? And shorting millions of documents can take time. But if you tell Mongo to short this list for you, then Mongo can do this work very efficiently because internally Mongo have so many other features such as indexing and operation pipelining that can make this process faster. So we will look into those features in details in upcoming tutorials. But I mean to say here is this kind of operation Mongo can do very efficiently. So instead of writing code in Java or in JavaScript, I can add one small element in my query and I can get this thing done. So for that, let me open my Spring Boot code. So this is my Spring Boot application and this is my repository which is talking to the database. So if you guys don't know anything about uh, Spring Boot or Java, then don't you don't need to worry about this because internally Mongo driver works the same. So what I need to do here is in this query annotation, I just need to add one more element called short. And inside this element, I just need to add my argument. So here I'm going to sort it with title. Let me add something like title and colon. I'm going to put one. So one is for uh, ascending order. So let me save this and restart this application. And let me go to my UI again. And if I refresh this, I can see this list is sorted with the alphabetical order. So this way the small change in query can reduce our lot of work and also it is very efficient move. The same way let's say I have 1 million records but I want to show only 10 records in that case also we need to filter but if we write proper query then Mongo will give us only 10 documents. And this kind of function is everywhere in social media applications where we have lazy loading and in lazy loading when you scroll down your application loads uh, next 10 or 15 posts. So that's why it is very important to learn how to write proper query. And writing query is an art. Better the query, better the performance. So let's go back to our reading discussion. And this is my Mongo shell. Control K to clean the Mongo shell. And here again, find without parentheses. And this find function accepts various argument. And to practice this query, we're going to use Mongo compass in this tutorial because there you can see visually what is happening. So let me open my Mongo compass. And if you guys don't have this Mongo compass, then you can download it from our Mongo website. So this is the website. I'll put link into the description. And uh, this is very important because this Mongo compass is free and it is a GUI client for MongoDB from MongoDB itself. And if you guys want to use any other client, then you can use it because most of the client work the same. So we have one uh, popular client, which is this Robo 3T and uh, Studio 3T. So Studio 3T is a paid version and uh, Robo 3T is a free version. You can use any one of them uh, clients. So in our Mongo compass, uh, first we need to connect our MongoDB server with this compass. So for that, we need to pass a host, port and uh, user credentials. And uh, there are two ways for that. We can pass URL here and we know how to create URL. It's a fixed structure. We need to pass MongoDB. Then we have user colon, then password and at the red sign. And then we have host and port details. Or we can go to this option and here we can pass all the fields separately. So for us, host name is localhost, then we have port number which is default 127017 and we don't have any authentication. So I'm, I'm going to choose none here. And if I do connect, I can see here we have this four database inside and we're going to use this test database. So here we are performing various read operations and for that we're going to need a better dummy data. So what I did is I imported this books collection. And uh, first, let me drop, drop this so I can show you how to import it. So here, if I press this delete button, then it is asking me name. If I do drop, then it is dropped. So now inside this test, we don't have any collection name book. So I found this books collection online and I'll put link into the description. So you guys can also download for practice purpose. And uh, to import the collection here, we just need to create collection first. So I'm going to create collection and let me give name books here so creating collection and now inside this test we have books but there is no document inside it so let me open this books so here i need to do this add data and import file because our data is in the file and first i need to give the path to that file so this is books.json and open 
and this file is a json format so you can upload csv also you can upload json but this particular file is of json format so i'm going to use json and if i do import so in your screen after import you can see something like this and we have these 399 documents in this collection and we have one indexes and uh, from these three button we can change the view if you want so we can see json structure of that uh, data or we can see the tabular format of the data so moving ahead now you can see here where this filter is written and if i open this options from here i can see filter project short collation skip limit and maximum times and probably you have heard this before and yes yeah, some of them are from our find function so this collation and max time you don't need to worry about this because we don't need them right now so if you go in our mongo shell this is our find function where we have this query fill limit and skip and batch size and stuff so here one thing to remember is query in mongodb is a document that means syntax of the query will look something like this something like document and uh, don't forget this sentence query in mongodb is a document and we know document have keys and values right and also values can be nested documents and sometimes deeply nested so mongodb query can be deeply nested and it is also a document structure and as a key we can pass fields of the document or we can use reserve keywords and yes in mongo we have keywords that is reserved for various operations so we're going to use those reserve keywords to write a better query and another thing is whatever you write here in this filter project short limit or skip in any field and if you hit find button it will go inside this function as a different arguments so that means is whatever you write inside this filter field it will go as a query whatever you write as a projection field it will go as a fields whatever you write here in limit and skip it will go as this arguments in this function so let's say i don't pass anything inside this fields and if i hit find then it will give me all the documents which is 399 documents and we have all the details so here this each document is representing the details about that book so we have this status field which is published so let's say i want only those books which is which status is published so in that case in this filter i can pass that condition in this filter query i need to pass condition and as i mentioned that query is a document so don't forget this curly braces and inside this curly braces i need to pass key which is the field name so we are addressing status field so status here and inside this value i'm going to pass publish so this query will give me only those books whose status is published so if i hit find here i can see we have 331 books but in total we have 399 books so rest of the books wasn't published yet so this is very basic query where we are comparing value directly that means mongo is comparing status equal to publish so let's say i made a spelling mistake something like i forget this i then in that case i won't get anything because there is no value with this same word so same way if i want books with some specific title i need to pass title as the key so here i need to pass title and as a value i need to pass exact title so let's say we are looking for a book name flex 4 in action and if i hit this find button then it is giving me only one document because we have only one book with this title the same way if i do page count and i need all the books that have 325 pages in that book then here i need to pass page count and as a value i need to pass 325 but make sure this page count is an integer value so here we don't need to pass this double quotes so remove that double quotes and here i'm going to do 325 and if i hit find then we have eight books we have eight books whose page count is 325 so till now we pass only one condition but now let's say i, I want books with 325 page count also i want some specific title so in that case i need to pass another condition here and i already mentioned that queries in mongo is a document so i need to pass another key here which is a title and i need to pass the title value so title value let's say something like i was in practice and if i hit find then we have one document whose page count is 325 and title is i was in practice here by default mongo use and operation between fields of same documents and if you want or operation then we need to use our reserve keywords or in other words we can say or operators 
these operators are very important part of query building and uh, there are many useful operators but in this particular tutorial we will discuss few of them because we will have a dedicated video for that so back to our question let's say i want to pass or condition then i need to use dollar sign or and uh, keep one thing in mind that dollar sign is a reserved in mongo because words starting with dollar sign is a reserved keyword so here we need to use this dollar sign or something like dollar or and this mongo compass is suggesting us a different operators here so let me do or and this red color of this filter is suggesting that something is wrong with our query because we know that query is a document so we need to do this query operators and then inside this or is the key so value represent by column and or operators only accept array so this should be wrapped around array and inside this uh, document we need to pass page count and title as a separate condition so separate condition means separate documents so here we need to complete and start document so this page count is a separate document and the title is a separate document so what mongo will do is mongo will match page count or it will match title and if i hit find we have eight documents with uh, page count 25 or whose title is ios in practice so this was very basic conditional operators but let's say we make this little bit harder and we want all the books with page count more than 400 so in that case we have another operator which is called gt so let me remove this query and uh, let me write it from scratch so so we know that a query is a document so curly braces and we are addressing this page count so we're going to put this page count as a key but now we need to do comparison right so in that case our value will be another nested document and inside this nested document we're going to put key as our operators and that operator is dollar sign gt gt means greater than and as a value i'm going to put whatever we want so i'm going to put 400 so internally what will happen is mongo will compare all the page count and if it is more than 400 it will take all the documents so if i hit find we have 142 document which has a page count more than 400 so if you see here we have 416 592 but you won't find any single one of them below that and you won't find even 400 if because we use greater than let's say we want greater than and equal to then i need to use gte now if i do find you can see here we have 452 documents because 10 documents is around 400 uh, pages so this way in mongo we have many operators for various operations and we will discuss them in future videos and if you guys want to read about it there is a link into the description so moving ahead if you see here mongo is giving all information together but we don't want all the information we want only title and page count in that case we need to use this projection field so in this projection field we need to write a document because this projection is also a document so curly braces and inside this document we need to pass whatever field we want so let's say we want title so first we're going to do title and colon and one so one is for true and zero is for false so we want title that means we are putting one as a true and comma and then again we need another field let's say page count and inside this i'm going to do one so normally we don't use uh, zero much because uh, once you pass one in any other field all other field become zero so if i hit find so this query will give me only two fields title and page count but as you can see here it is giving me id also right so id is a default in mongo it is a uniqueness so mongo will give you all the time you ask for it or not so if you don't want id then in that case you need to explicitly mention that you don't need id so in that case here we need to do comma and then underscore id and then colon and i need to put zero zero means false so now if i hit this find i won't get id so this way we can use this projection field and we can ask for only those details that we want so in real world application we have so much data in database and we don't need anything at once so asking information that we need is very important and it reduce our filtration process as well as our network load moving ahead let's say we want to short this result with page count then in this short field we need to pass some queries some conditions here and again it is a document so we're going to put a curly braces and inside this curly braces we need to pass the field name and that field name is we want count, page count right and colon and then value so as a value we have two possibilities one or minus one so one means ascending order and minus one means descending order so if i put one 
and if I fi do find then you can see it start with 400 and then it will increase slowly 402 408 then 420 and like that but if I pass minus 1 here then it will give me from backwards so 1101 is the highest count then it is decreasing here so same way let's say if I want to sort based on title then I need to pass title here so here if I do title and let me put plus one and if I hit find then it will give me from a b first it will be the number and then a then b and c and like that also we can add two fields to sort for example let's say I want to sort based on title first and then inside that title I want based on page count so I can do comma here and add another field where I can pass page count and in a colon I can say one if I hit find then I can see here inside this ASP we have 504, 432 and then 450. If I do minus 1 then this order will be swapped. So this is change. So right now for this condition we have 152 documents and uh, let's say I don't want all of them. I just want first 10. So, and uh, to explain that I have another UI running in my local and I created this using uh, React and the Spring Boot application and I have implemented pagination here. So here we have different options we have this short by id we have this uh, page size and the, we have page numbers and here let me open inspect so you guys can see what is happening internally and this network tab let me clean this and if i hit refresh then you can see we have this api here and this api is giving me 10 documents okay so let's say if i change from 10 to 5 i want only five documents so in in that condition if i do five I can see it call another time and it is giving me only five documents and here from this option I can change various things I can change the size of the page or I can change the page number let's say I want to see another page then I can see 6 to 10 if I do next then I can see 11 to 16 so this ID is uh, what, number 12 is missing that's why it's a 16 here so in that case we need to use our limit in our uh, Mongo compass so if I go back to our Mongo compass you can see here we have this limit and we have this skip. We need to use both of these to implement that. So right now it is giving 152 documents in the response but we want only 10 and in that case if I hit 10 and if I do find then it will give me only 10 documents. If I pass 20 here it will give me 20 documents. And You can see all of them here. So let me go back to our UI and here let me refresh this and open that inspect element with network tab and it is giving me 10 documents at a time so now i am in the first document and let's say i want to go in second document so let me clear this and if i hit next then i'm seeing 11 to another, another 10 uh, documents right so what is happening is it give me 10 documents only but not the first 10 it give me second 10 so what is happening here is we use a skip element for that so let me go back to mongo compass and here we need to use this skip so how skip work is let me do 10 and remove everything from here so you can see what is happening so here if I hit 10 I can see only 10 documents but let's say I want a second 10 not first 10 then I can write 10 here so it will skip first 10 elements and it will give you second 10 so if, now if I hit find I can see ID starting with 11 so if you are in first page we don't need to skip anything and uh, if you are in second page we need to skip first page size and if you are on third page then we need to skip page size minus 1 multiplied by page size so this is our formula we need to subtract 1 from our current page size and we need to multiply with the page size and pass that number into the skip element and skip will give you only those data that we need and this way we can query a document more precisely by using all of these features and we can put little bit load on the mongo layer and we can free up the other layer and we can make our overall system faster and this Mongo compass is also very important. So while development, we can test our queries in this Mongo compass. And if you want to see what query this compass is firing internally, then you can go here to these three dots, these options. And here we have this toggle query history. This will open one window. And here you can see we have all the queries that we passed before. So whatever query is giving you right results, set that query here and then copy from this button and paste it in your code. So this way you can directly use these queries. And additionally, we have the schema and explain plan that we use uh, to sharpen our query a little bit more. You will uh, take a look in our upcoming uh, tutorials.
so that's all for now in this tutorial and uh, before ending this uh, video i want to suggest you guys to do some practice on this because it doesn't matter if you are working as a dba or not uh, learning about mongo and these different queries and operators will definitely make you a little bit better developer and uh, if you like these tutorials don't forget to like share and subscribe and uh, see you in next one till then keep learning thank you very much Thank mm -hmm. you.